All right, folks. Here it is. This is our subcast. Casting Dread. The Penny Dreadful Show. The eighth episode and season finale of Penny Dreadful is entitled Grand Gunyal. It was written by John Logan and directed by James Hawes. And now it's time for a little story. We open to Vanessa and Sir Malcolm. The images that she saw were from the theater, and she believes Mina wants to be contacted. Dorian arrives, asking Vanessa to lunch. She refuses. He tries again for dinner. She refuses and leaves, giving him the cold shoulder. At the Mariner's Inn, Ethan kneels and prays beside a frail, ill Brona. Outside, two American men are waiting for Ethan. One says to be patient, to enjoy the hunt. Sir Malcolm purchases an automatic pistol from a shop. As he leaves, he meets Madame Kali, whose real name is Evelyn Poole. Evelyn has read about him in the papers, and he is going on an expedition. She queries if he's seen much of Vanessa, to which he denies. Sir Malcolm hastes to leave, but she assures him that he shall see her again. Caliban has issues with the rigging at the theater. He is shunned by fellow actors, but Vincent passes it off as the others as prima donnas. In the basement, Maud visits him. She gives Caliban an orange and thanks him for the book. They speak of happiness, but he believes that is for others. She says he does not have to hide his face from her. Then as she leaves, she kisses him on the forehead. He is moved beyond words. Vanessa wants to know why Sir Malcolm didn't want her on the ship. He was trying to protect her. She doesn't believe that. Then he reveals to her it's true he would sacrifice her to save Mina and might even hope he gets the chance. Later, Caliban puts on makeup and visits Maud, offering her an orange. She is amused, and he cannot contain his feelings. He goes for her, trying to kiss her. She fights him off, and later, Vincent tells Caliban that he must leave. But if he had a choice, he'd fire the actors and keep Caliban himself. Caliban extends a hand, but Vincent embraces him. Caliban leaves. High above the stage, the master sleeps. Vanessa meets Dorian in the gardens. She cannot deny a real connection between them, but she must refuse him. Something inside her was unleashed that must be contained. It is the first time he has ever been rejected. As she walks away, a tear falls from his eye. He looks at it as if it were a foreign substance. Caliban is in Victor's lab having no other choice, as he has nowhere to go. Victor cannot forgive him what he did to Professor Van Helsing. He doesn't have the stomach even to do what Caliban asks. Caliban agrees. Victor grabs a gun. Caliban tells of the dreams of love. He asks Victor why he wasn't created of stone and why he was allowed to feel. Caliban tells Victor to pull the trigger because it would be a blessing. Victor cannot. He puts his hand on Caliban's shoulder. A knock on the door comes, and Victor tells him to stay. Ethan needs Victor. Brona is on her deathbed. It is at the point where Victor can only give her a sedative. He asks Ethan to go down the hall and fetch some water. Victor tells Brona that he believes in a place between life and death, but there is a price to live there. She wants it. She believes. Then Victor smothers her with a pillow. Ethan returns shortly after and weeps. Victor says not to worry, or he'll take care of the body. At the Mariner's Inn, Ethan is drinking. The two men following him introduce themselves as Mr. Roper and Mr. Kidd with the Pinkerton Agency. They are charged by Ethan's father to bring him home, forcefully if necessary. Then Ethan attacks them and leaves the bar. That night outside the Grand Guignol, Ethan meets Vanessa, Sir Malcolm, Sir Benny, and Victor. So Malcolm says that Mina is his responsibility. They enter. They search among the seats to no avail. They search along the stage. Sir Malcolm and Vanessa go above. They shine a light above near the rafters. The master who opens his eyes. Ethan falls below the stage as vampires attack. Ethan fires his pistol as he is swarms and Benny and Victor descend to help 
Sir Malcolm fires at the master from above, but the creature is too quick. Below, Victor is overrun in some Benny, and Victor cannot help. The master descends above in front of Vanessa. He pauses, ready to kill. Then Sir Malcolm drives a spike into his chest. He falls. The vampires are about to tear Ethan apart when Sir Malcolm descends on the stage and drives the spike deeper into the master's chest. The master falls still, and the vampires die on the spot. Someone calls out Vanessa's name. She turns. It is Mina. Vanessa rushes to her and embraces her. They gather round as Mina holds Vanessa. Then her eyes turn red and she holds Vanessa at bay. She tells them that they all have done well. Now that the master has his bride, they shall sire generations. She goes to bite Mina, but Sir Malcolm fires at her shoulder. On the ground, Mina says that she's Sir Malcolm's daughter as he stands over her, pistol pointed. Sir Malcolm says that he already has a daughter and fires a bullet into Mina. Later at the mansion, Vanessa and Sir Malcolm embrace in terrible tears. In Victor's library, he removes a sheet. Brona's body is still on the table. Caliban is stunned. Victor prepares to operate. In a bar, Ethan is alone, staring outside. Mr. Roper and Mr. Kidd have followed him. They surround Ethan, calling him a monkey. Ethan cannot hold his anger and says that he's not a monkey. Then he turns on them, his eyes and face beast-like, and tears them apart underneath the full moon. Vanessa is outside of a church, and she finally walks in. She meets with the priest. She wants to be exorcised. He says it could take weeks or years. He also says that being touched by the devil is like being touched by the backhand of God. Before he continues, he must ask a question. Does Vanessa really want to be normal? And that's it, folks. That is Grand Gunyol, the last episode of Season 1 for Penny Dreadful. I thought it was great. I thought that Brona's storyline had expired and they got rid of her. I think the shots are marvelous. Something's off about Mina. The timing of her in the framing of the story, it felt like a strange payoff in a way. But it is understood that they are setting up a larger scenario. Again, Dorian Gray seems like he should have more to do. Simbeni is actually evolving at this point as a character. The direction is amazing. The script is top-notch and the performance is superior. So there are a lot of theories out there about Season 2. I'll go through a few of those theories right now with you. Brona is actually set up to be the, quote, Bride of Frankenstein. Although Bride of Frankenstein isn't the proper term because she should be Caliban's bride. And is Caliban really going to be happy? If Brona indeed is resurrected, how is she going to feel about him? In the 1935 film Bride of Frankenstein, James Whale directed that one and the bride was less than pleased when she saw Boris Karloff's creature. In the second season, Sam Benny needs more to do. Sir Malcolm's not going to go on an expedition. He has his daughter and he has a family. Sembeni should figure into this in some way. And a lot of speculated about Sembeni's real past. When it comes to Victor himself, I thought the performance was outstanding. He has a lot to do. It seems that he finally broke. Even though that Van Helsing was murdered and Proteus was murdered, Victor is someone who needs family. He's a bit of the outsider. He doesn't live in Sir Malcolm's home. He's not romantically drawn to Vanessa, or at least thought to believe that. So he needs family. And the logical response is to Caliban, and that performance by Rory Kinnear as the creature, as Caliban. Absolutely outstanding. When it comes to Ethan, they've been dropping hints about the wolf inside Ethan all season long, and it's finally come to roost. He's a killer. He wakes up, he doesn't know where he is. There are going to be consequences for his actions. But who is his father? And why is he so hell-bent on Ethan returning? We can assume that Ethan killed in America. But what else is there? As for Sir Malcolm, he has a family. But he's lost a lot. 
What is his function now that Mina is gone? Is his function to be a father? Is his function to try to make up for his past sins through Vanessa? It seems logical. But of course, the real question is Vanessa herself. It's led to believe that the initial possession is over, as of episode 7, but she still has that connection. She was led to the Grand Guignol. So what does that mean? If Vanessa is indeed the devil's bride, why is she hesitating to be exorcised? Does she want this power? Does she want to give up this power? That is an interesting question the priest proposed. As for the theories, Amun-Ra and Amunet are the two centerpieces of the story. With Amun-Ra as the big bad, Amun-Ra has been talked about by the main characters, they've also been referred to by the villains, and the Master Vampire wasn't the master at all. So they all fall under this hierarchy. We understand so far that Amun-Ra and the Devil are probably the same. This is a show dealing about the characters of Dracula, and the Count himself is yet to be revealed. Many believe that Amun-Ra, the Devil, and Dracula are three different entities, or two different entities. I completely disagree. I believe they are one and the same. And it starts off with the name of Dracula himself, which is translated into Son of the Dragon, or Son of the Devil. And we're talking about Vanessa herself. During one of her visions, she calls the entity inside her Prince of Darkness, which could be referring to the actual devil, and it's also a reference to the nod Dracula Prince of Darkness, thus strengthening the devil-Dracula tie. If you remember Fenton, he talks about Mother, and Fenton is an obvious nod to Renfield. The Master has Egyptian tattoos on his chest, and he is a vampire. And all the evidence presented to you previously shows that these three beings are actually one and the same. So let's start about Dracula. Where is he? It's been proposed by some that Dracula is already in the story and he has already been seen. There have been allusions to the devil throughout the series, as early as Vanessa eating an apple. The apple could be representative of Adam and Eve in the biblical story, the tempting of the apple. It also has a reference to bats. Fright Night was a film that equated apples and bats as bats needing the fruit. Theories. Dracula is actually Ethan's father. John Logan describes Ethan's father as a monstrous man who treated his son brutally. However, this monstrous man is in the United States, and he's not yet appeared. It seems a little bit too convoluted that the werewolves and the vampires would be mixed up together, that Dracula could actually be Ethan's father, so I disagree with this theory entirely. Dorian Gray. There is a picture of him on the internet holding a snake with fang marks in him. It could be emblematic of Vanessa as the serpent, or it could be something else. Is Dorian Dracula? Is he the devil? It's interesting about the timing of Dorian's arrival and the time that these things all start to happen. He allows Vanessa to come to his home and Sir Malcolm is on the trade ship, and yet they still try to take out Sir Malcolm, so the timing is interesting. Vanessa calls him beautiful, and Lucifer is often described as beautiful, a light bringer. Along with the picture of Dorian Gray holding the snake, it is plausible. I do think that Dorian is somehow involved with Dracula, but he isn't Dracula. He is immortal and unhappy and satisfied. If he was Dracula, why wait? Why not take her in the garden? Why allow her to run away? That doesn't make a lot of sense. There is a thought that Dracula is possibly Sir Malcolm. Sir Malcolm, when appearing to her as a vision, speaks a line from Keats. And interestingly enough, Keats is an anagram for the word steak. That's probably a bit much. Sir Malcolm is rich, he's experienced in travel, and it is from the event when Vanessa found him and her mother in the maze when she became infected. That was when Vanessa's origins were revealed. The vision of Dracula slash the devil came to her as Sir Malcolm. And then it manifested a full psychosexual experience and her mother died because of it. A closer relationship with Mina would also have helped to lead Vanessa to Sir Malcolm's confidence, going so far later as to choose Vanessa over Mina and to give her a home. If Sir Malcolm is Dracula slash the devil, 
Why didn't he act until now? Why is he waiting for all these pieces to fall? If his goal is world domination, why invite Victor Frankenstein on board? Why take the time to go after Ethan and hire him in the first place? At best, they're probably threats to him. It's interesting about Simbeni. Could Simbeni be the devil? What happened to Sir Malcolm in Africa? I also dismiss the possibility about Simbeni being Dracula slash the devil because it also seems convoluted and a bit of a stretch. There's not a lot to base it on. There's more evidence of Dracula being Sir Malcolm or even Dorian Gray. There is a thought that Dracula is actually the Antichrist and the devil is someone else. There is an interesting part of literature called the Scholomance, and it's referenced in Bram Stoker's Dracula, in which the devil takes the tenth servant. Dracula is versed in necromancy, which means he can control the dead. But in all this, if you're still not convinced that Dracula, the devil, and Amon-Ra are the same being, I'm going to read a line from Stoker himself. He is of cunning more than mortal. For his cunning be the gross of ages. He have still the age of necromancy, which is, as his etymology imply, the divination by the dead. And all the dead that he can come nigh to are for him at command. He is brute. And more than brute, he is devil in callous. And the heart of him is not. Thank you, Dr. Van Helsing. Do I think that he's going to show up in season two? No. I don't think Dracula is going to appear in season two. You might see him in the shadows, but the real antagonists seem to be Madame Kali, or Evelyn Poole, and two others. We've been told that there are witches, Lucifer's servants, and they are the primary antagonist. And also, once you pull the Dracula card, you can't go back. And all evidence point to Dracula and the devil being the same thing. And as soon as you pull that card, what are you going to do after that? They're taking care to present Dracula as a proper villain, to present him as the big bad as he should be. Dracula's a foul, mean, evil, nasty character as presented in Stoker's novel, and John Logan knows this. The earliest I think that we'll actually see Dracula's face is season three. My largest concern is they get an actor to stand up with Ava Green, Josh Hartnett, Timothy Dalton, Rory Kinnear, and the rest. But Penny Dreadful has an excellent track record, and I think they'll do that. When we finally see Dracula, it's going to be an interesting show. I can't wait till season two, and folks, if we haven't convinced you to watch Penny Dreadful, you must not have a pulse. Get that? No pulse? Dracula? 